Gareth, how are you doing today? I am very good. This is the first interview, so I'm fresh. You're going to get good answers. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and no pressure on me either <laughs> to ask amazing no, questions. None on me, please, either. Yeah. I was reading up on some of the background around this, and uh, a quote from Louis Leterrier jumped out where he said that some of the tech behind this movie could potentially change cinema forever going forward, which is you know an impressive thing to say about the movie. But... Having seen it and just knowing everything around it, it does feel like this could be almost like a little watershed moment for blockbusters. Uh, is that something that's kind of come up a lot around the making and also since it's, since people got eyes on it? Well, I, pay, I paid Louis a thousand dollars to say that, so um, <laughs> that was money well spent. The no, I would never claim that this film is that kind of you know that seismic a shift in cinema, but it was definitely a wanted to do things differently. I got to do, I was very lucky. I got to make, I made a very low budget movie with a lot of creative freedom. And then that teleported me to the like World Cup final with Godzilla and Star Wars. And I was, okay, there must be, you know, a sweet spot in between the two where you get all that creative artistic freedom of an independent film, but with all the scope and scale of a Hollywood blockbuster. And so I was just looking like for a process. The process was as important to me as even the screenplay, like having control over how the movie is made. And now with all this, what I would call prosumer equipment, there's a lot of um, innovation happening, at, you know, at the, in the sort of mid-range cameras and, and, and technology with lighting and everything that's at the high end, at the highest level, it's kind of gotten a little bit stagnant in my opinion. And so, so we were using a lot of stuff like these prosumer cameras, um, like there was a Sony camera called called the FX3, if anyone cares, and it basically can shoot at an ISO of 12,800. So essentially, you can film in moonlight. It's so sensitive to light. And then the second you have that, you don't need giant lights everywhere. You can have like battery op operated LED lights. So you know, as well as the sound guy having a microphone on a stick, we had a pole with lights on it that, and so we could move around, be really fluid, relight the scene in like three seconds. And in drone technology, when we did Star Wars, we had a drone and it was like a mini helicopter and it crashed and we were told we couldn't <laughs> use it again. And where, now you've all seen them, you can have drones in your pocket. Like there's a, there's a shot in the trailer that's just a $2,000 drone. You know, it's all very, and it's all cinema, full cinema resolution and looks amazing. So everything's changing. It's a very exciting time to be a young filmmaker, I think. Sadly, I'm not young anymore, but um, I'm very happy for everyone else. <laughs> But you paved the way for the younger filmmakers, and that's that's important too. For this, like I am a massive, a massive fan of Godzilla and of Rogue One, and the DNA in them all is there's this sense of scale that I think some blockbusters they have difficulty pulling it off. But in your movies, and I have to I, not to like fanboy too much, but I have to commend you on there is always a constant sense of scale, and there is a, there's one scene in particular in this where. I don't want to give too much away, but there is something approaching and you don't quite see it yet until it kind of breaks the tree line. Okay. And even in, even in that scene, I was like, oh my God, like it felt so big. Of right. course, again, because as, as, you, as you mentioned, like it is not as big a movie maybe as, as some other blockbusters. Is that something that you're aware of, of like how you create that sense of scale? Like how, how easy is it for you to go, right, this is what we're doing to create the the kind of the scope that we're on. It's funny because I don't think about it, but I get, I have heard that from people now and again, and it's not a conscious thing. Well, it is actually, but it's, but what I mean is, it's basically, it's a, it's a cheat because I used to do visual effects for a living and the cheapest thing in the world that gives you the most bang for buck, let's imagine you're putting some building in the background on the horizon, right? If you just go to the scale setting and increase it, the building just grows massive. And, and so like, just for like the, the turn of a dial, it now looks like a million dollar set versus like a $10,000 set. And so like, so that, so just put in making things big, but the thing you learn about doing VFX is that scale is relative. So you can't have something look bit, it's basically all dependent on what's either in the frame with it or what you just set up prior to it. So like an obvious trick is, is like if you're having a human in the same shot, Everyone knows the scale of a person. If you have the human in the same shot as whatever it is you're trying to make look big, try to have them human as small as possible. So like get back with the camera, like don't be over their shoulder and things like this. And there's like a whole bunch of tricks but um, that you learn because I used to do very cheap computer graphics and the more I made things look big, the more money I got. 
And so it was like just just learning that way of how, to, and I, and then I've obviously brought it, I guess, into uh, films that I've been making. I have one final quick one, if that's okay, just off the back of of the reaction to this, um, uh, just chatting on online to other film critics and, and people who love movies. Uh, your name is now thrown into the mix a lot for who should take over for Bond. Uh, oh. Is that a, anything you'd be interested in at all? I feel like there's some nice things that have been written online, but if you look carefully at the Twitter handle, it's actually my mum. She's just really pr <laughs> proud. I've been really lucky. I've won the lottery a couple of times now in film franchise world. And I think the last thing you should do when you win the lottery is spend your winnings on more lottery tickets. And so I feel like let everybody else have a crack at stuff. And like, this was such a great, I'm, I don't want to go back to, to the other way of making films. Like this was such an eye opener. It, kind of everything we took a gamble on sort of paid off. So I just want to make films in the same style and keep pushing it further if I can. Fantastic. Gareth, thank you so much for the time to talk to me today. Thank you. Thank you.